Hello, my name is Helen Tovey. I'm editor of Family Tree. I'm delighted today to be talking to Jim Halstead. And he's going to be speaking at the Secret Lives Conference about his ancestor, who's called Joe, but he knew nothing else about him. So how on earth did you find out more about Joe? Hello, Helen. Thank you. Nice to see you. Well, I uh, discovered Joe by chance as I was researching someone else and who I thought had a unique name. Mm. Turns out that they didn't that there was one other name like that as well, and that led me to discover Joe. Ooh. And so what was there about Joe's life that made you want to find out more? So it's hard enough finding out about the, the maybe the direct ancestors we do have, let alone branching off. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the thing that interests me about Joe, Joe is a, a, a soldier of the, the Great War, and he is not commemorated on any of the local memorials where mm. he came from. And also, uh, he went to war having been widowed and having a seven-year-old child. Oh, that's a tough decision, isn't it? It it, it is a tough decision. And it's one that I think nowadays we we would not find it easy to understand Mm. with our modern sensibilities. So part of my research is to understand why a widower with a seven-year-old child would choose to go to war. And was it looking at the context of the time? Obviously, we can all imagine the sort of pressures he might have felt to fight. Was it that sort of thing? Did you get a feeling that... Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, and, and some proof as well of the of the way in which he was recruited mm. and how early modern persuasion techniques were, were used to get recruits like Joe. So as you as your family didn't have any kind of family folklore memory of Joe, mm-hmm. are these all official sources that you're using to it's, learn more about him? It's some official sources, yeah. but it's also filling in the gaps where there are gaps between the official records to try and understand how things happened with Joe during his lifetime. As an example of that, let's say that one of the areas that, that very much interests me is, is how, when you study family history, you get to understand some of the impact of national events of the mm, time. Definitely, so yeah. I've already referred to the mass persuasion techniques of the, the early uh, 20th century. But uh, in addition to that, there are, there are a number of other things as well. I shall be referring in my talk to the state funeral of Queen Victoria and the coronation of King Edward VII, and also... I'm going to be referring to uh, the use of shrines during the First War, gas warfare, and the fact that, uh, as well as memorials to the dead, some places actually produced, if you can imagine it these days, memorials to the living. Mm. So it sounds as though all of these things are actually quite encouraging for anyone else out there who has an ancestor who they don't know very much about because by using all of this social context material you're actually getting such a feeling for an unknown ancestor's life aren't you? I hope so and I hope people will be inspired by that. Joe's is a great story and I'm looking forward to telling it very much at the conference. Yeah and one more thing I know that you're very keen to make sure that his memory doesn't get um, lost again Mm -hmm. so um, will you be telling people also about how you're going to be making sure that he remains very much a part of your family history? History yes, into the future. yes, there are several ways we did that, and I shall be uh, talking about, about those as well. That sounds very interesting. So at the conference, there's so many different speakers, and, and you can see that from your research, you've clearly used lots of different resources to build together your own research. So what are you most looking forward to from getting out of the conference? Well, I'm looking forward to some of the other talks, particularly where there have been academic studies which have led to papers and they, they're coming to talk to us. There's an area of crime and punishment I'm interested in, also some lunatic asylum information that I'm, that I'm very much hoping to, to catch if, if I get the chance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to our celebrity speaker. That promises to be very interesting. And, Sounds intriguing, yeah. Uh, yeah it does. Yeah. And also because I'm, I'm, I'm running the conference quiz this year, I'm hoping to throw one or two interesting questions out to all the delegates and see what sort of response I get to those. Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Jim. You're very welcome.